Today we're going to be going over 5.1 using formulas in geometry. The objective in this lesson is to apply formulas for perimeter, area, and circumference. Some of the vocab words are perimeter, area, base, height, diameter, radius, and circumference, and pi. We're going to go over all these vocab words in this lesson. The perimeter which is often called P of a plane figure, is the sum of the side lengths of the figure. So if we had a square, the perimeter would be the outside of the square. So if we walked along the outside of the square, that would be the perimeter. The area a of a plane figure is the number of non-overlapping square units of a given size that exactly covers the figure. So let's take another square. The area would be everything on the inside of the square. So perimeter is the outside barrier of the square, while the area is the inside. The formula for rectangle, when we're looking for the perimeter, we would look at this formula, 2L, so 2 times the length, plus 2W, so it would be 2 times the width. Or we could do 2 times L plus W. The area of a rectangle would be just length times width. For a square, the perimeter would be 4s, so s would just be one side. So the perimeter would be as if we added this side, plus this side, plus this side, plus this side. So the perimeter would be 4s, and the area would be 2 times s. The area would be s squared, s squared here for the area, which would be the inside. The perimeter of a triangle is A plus B plus C, and the area would be one half base times height or base times height over two. These formulas are super important. We're gonna be using them, applying them to these three types of shapes in the following examples, so it's very important that you remember everything on this page. Screenshot this page if you need to because these formulas you will use when you're doing the SAT, ACT. These formulas come up that you have to remember how to find the area of each one of these shapes and the perimeter. So this is very important. The base which is also just called B, can be any side of a triangle. The height which is also just called H is a segment from a vertex that forms a right angle with a line containing the base. The height may be a side of the triangle, like in this example the height is the side or the interior or the exterior of the triangle. So in the first example, the height is the side of the triangle. In this one, the height is on the interior. And on the third, the height is the exterior. So as we see, so in the first triangle, we have the height and the base that form a right angle. In this one, we don't have a side and the base that form a right angle, so we would have to drop the height down from the vertex in order to form this right angle with the base. And in the third one, we have to drop the height from the outside in order to form a right angle with the base. The perimeter is expressed in linear units such as inches or meters, and the area is expressed in square units such as square centimeters. So if we looked at the 
example we have for perimeter of a rectangle, so if we had a rectangle, we would do, we would add up all the sides. So we'd add up this side, this side, this side, or this side, which would also just be two. So if this was our length, this was our width, it would be two L plus two W. So this would be inches that we were walking. So we just walk inches here, inches here, and it's just continuous inches. So that would just be as expressed as inches, whereas area, we would have to multiply. So if we had the area of a rectangle, we would have to multiply the length times the width. So the area would be length, which is measured in inches, and width which is measured in inches, so it would be inches squared because we would have inches times inches. When often talking about houses, you would hear people say that it's measured in square feet, which would be all of the square footage that the house is on top of. So now let's find the perimeter and the area of each figure of each figure. So in this one we have a rectangle. So we know the perimeter of a rectangle is 2 L plus 2 W which here we have the length as 6 so we would have 2 times 6 plus 2 times the width. The width is 4 And this would be, so 2 times 4, this would be 12 plus 8, so the perimeter is equal to 20 inches. Now in the area, we have length times width, so we would take the length, which is 6, times the width, which is 4, and we would get 24 inches squared. So notice how when talking about the area we have to do oops, inches squared and talking about the perimeter we do just inches. So now let's find the perimeter and area of a triangle. So the perimeter would be a A plus B plus C. So in this case, we could just call this A, this B, and this C. So we have X plus 4 plus 6 plus 5X. So we're just adding up all the sides, and we would get combined the x's together, so this would be 6x plus 10, and this would be the perimeter. Now when dealing with area, our formula we would use would be 1 half base times height. So here we have the base as, so let's look at the base, we have 6 and the height, we have x plus 4, because we can use this height because it makes a right angle with the base. So we would do 1 half times 6 times x plus 4, and we would get 3 times x plus 4 which would be 3x plus 12, and that would be our area. In this example, we don't have to worry about inches or inches squared because it's not given to us here. Only numbers are given here, so our answer wouldn't have any units. So find the perimeter and area of a square with a size equal to 3.5 inches. So we could draw it out if we want. We know that the side is 3.5 inches. So the formula we would use for perimeter would be 
for s and in this case s is 3.5 so we would do 4 times 3.5 which is equal to 14 inches so that would be our perimeter now for area we would do the formula of side squared so we would do 3.5 squared and this would give us 12.25 inches squared it's important that we include the inches and the inches squared when it's given to us in the problem so that's our perimeter and this is our area the queen's quilt block includes 12 blue triangles the base and height of each triangle are about four inches so we could do b is equal to four and h is equal to four because that's given to us find the approximate amount of fabric used to make the 12 triangles we know that the formula for the area of a triangle is one half base times height and we're using area because we need to find the amount of fabric it used to make the 12 triangles so we're taking a triangle and we are so let's take a triangle and cover it with fabric so we're covering the whole triangle with fabric so we would need to find the area of the triangle so here we have area is equal to one half base times height we know that the base is four and the height is four so the area is one half four times four which is just eight and remember areas in inches squared but queen's quilt block includes 12 blue triangles so we would need to multiply 8 by 12 because we need to find how much fabric it takes to make the 12 triangles and this would give us 96 inches squared so 96 inches squared is how much fabric it would take to cover the queen's quilt block Find the amount of fabric used to make four rectangles. Each rectangle has the length of six and a half. So we know that L is equal to six and a half. And the width is equal to two and a half. And we're looking to make four rectangles. So the area of a rectangle is length times width length times width so we know the area would be six and a half times two and a half which is equal to 16 and one fourth inches squared because we're talking about area and we're trying to make four rectangles so we would take this 16 and 1 fourth and multiply it by 4 and we would get 65 inches squared and that would be our answer in a circle a diameter is a segment that passes through the center of the circle and whose endpoints are on the circle. A radius of a circle is a segment whose endpoints are the center of the circle and a point on the circle. So here we have the radius in red, which is starts at the center and its endpoint goes to the a point on the circle and the diameter which is the blue one whose two endpoints 
are both on the circle and it goes through the center of the circle. And lastly, we have the circumference. of a circle, which is the distance around the circle. So if we started at this point on the circle and walked all the way around the circle once, that would be our circumference. The circumference C of a circle is given by the formula C is equal to pi times D, which remember is the diameter, or the circumference is equal to two pi times the radius. The area A of a circle is given by the formula A is equal to 2 is pi r squared. So we have the formula here for circumference and then the formula here for the area of the circle. Which remember, when we have a circle, the circumference is the outside of the circle and the area is everything that's in the middle of the circle. So the formula for circumference is 2 pi r and the area is pi r squared. These are very important. Pi represents the value of the ratio of a circle's circumference to its diameter and this is just represented by the Greek letter pi is how we would draw it. And pi is often approximated to 3.14 or pi is equal to the fraction 22 over seven. But in these examples, we're not gonna use a calculator, so we'll just leave pi as the pi symbol. So find the circumference and area of a circle with a radius 8. Use the pi key on your calculator, then round to the nearest tenth. So we're not going to use a calculator, we're just going to leave it as pi. But we know the formula for circumference is 2 pi r. So here it gives us that r is equal to 8 centimeters. So we would do 2 times pi times 8, and then that would give us 16 pi, and we have to include the centimeters at the end. The area, we know the formula is pi r squared, so we keep pi, r is equal to 8 squared, so we would have 64 pi centimeters squared. We do the same thing for circles as we did in the other shapes that we keep the centimeters squared when talking about area and just the centimeters when talking about circumference. And it's also important that you put the number first. So see how in both cases we did 16 and then pi and then 64 and then pi and then we tack on the units at the end. So find the circumference and area of a circle with radius 14 meters. So we know the circumference, the formula is 2 pi r and r is equal to 14 so you do 2 pi times 14 2 times 14 is 28, and we just tack on the pi, and we make sure we include the meters. So this would be the circumference of the circle. Now area, the formula is pi r squared. So we bring down the pi, and r is equal to 14 squared. And so this would be 14 squared is 196 pi, and then we're dealing with meters, which is given to us, so meters squared. 
and this would be the area of the circle. Okay, so find the perimeter and area of this rectangle. We have the perimeter, which is equal to 2 times the length plus 2 times the width. So we have the length as 2 times x plus 4, and the width would be just x, so 2 times x. Now we multiply the 2 out, so it would be 2x plus 8 plus 2x. Now we can combine the 2x's, so it would be 4x plus 8, and that would be our perimeter. And notice how there's no units that were given, so we just simply leave it as 4x plus 8. Now let's find the area. We know the formula for an area of a rectangle is length times width. So the area would be x plus 4 times x. So we distribute the x, and it would be x squared plus 4x, and that would be the area of the triangle. Now let's move on to the the. So this is the area for the rectangle. Now let's move on to the triangle. We have the perimeter, which we know is equal to all the outside sides added together. So it would be A plus B plus C. So the perimeter is 10 plus X plus 6 plus 3X. Then we can add all the x's together, which would be 4x plus 16. And that would be our answer for perimeter. So now let's look at the area. The formula for area of a triangle is 1 half base times height. So in this case, we would use the height as 2x because it is the formed by the vertex that makes a right angle with the base. So 2x would be the height, and the base would be 10. So the area is equal to 1 half, 10 times 2x. So now we multiply this all together, so we would get 10x. And that's our answer for the area of a triangle. Now let's move on to the square. The perimeter of a square is equal to 4s, because we're just adding up all the sides, so 4 times each side. So it would be p is equal to 4 times 4.8, and p would be equal to 19.2 centimeters. So here it gives us centimeters, so we have to make sure we include centimeters. Now let's look at the area of a square, which would be s squared. So the side we have is 4.8. So 4.8 squared would be equal to 23.04, and we have to include centimeters squared because we're talking about area. Last example. Find the circumference and area of each circle. Leave answers in terms of pi. So let's do four down here. We have a radius of two centimeters. Well, we need to find the circumference, which is equal to 2 pi r, so the circumference is 2 pi times 2, so the circumference of number 4 would be 4 pi centimeters. Now let's look at the area of a circle with a radius of 2 centimeters. So the formula for an area 
of the circle is pi r squared. We know that the radius is 2 centimeters, so we would do pi times 2 squared, and the area would be 4 pi centimeters squared. Now let's look at 5. A circle with a diameter of 12 feet. So the circumference, we had a formula for a circumference using the diameter, which is just pi times d. But we also know that a diameter is from goes through the center of a circle from one end to the other, whereas the radius starts at the center and just goes to one end. So the radius is equal to d divided by 2. So if we had a diameter, this whole length that was 12 feet, we would know the radius of this same circle would just be 6 feet. It's half of the diameter. So we know that r in this case is equal to 6 feet. But we can use diameter when finding the circumference. So the circumference is equal to pi times 12, which would be 12 pi, and we have feet as our units for this one. So we needed to find what the radius of a circle with the diameter of 12 would be because we need to use the radius when dealing with the area because the only formula we have for area of a circle is pi r squared. So here we found that the radius is 6 feet, so we would do pi times 6 squared, which would be 36 pi, and we have to include feet squared. Last example, number 6. Oops, 6. This one. The area of a rectangle is 74.82 inches squared and the length is 12.9 inches. Find the width. So we know what the formula of a rectangle is. It's the, the formula of the area of a rectangle. So the area is equal to length times width. And in this case, it gives us the area as 74.82. And it gives us the length, so we know that the area is equal to length times width, which would be 12.9 times w. Because it doesn't give us the width, we need to find the width. So we would divide by 12.9 to isolate the w, 12.9, and 74.82 divided by 12.9 is equal to 5.8 and this would be our width and the width is measured in inches. So remember that the length is measured in inches, the width is measured in inches in this example because it gives us the length in inches. So then the width would be in inches but the area is in inches squared, which would be this. So we plugged in 74.82 for the area, 12.9 for the length, and then we needed to find what the width was. And in this case, it would be 5.8 inches. So tonight's homework that is on Canvas, the homework is page... 38 through 41, numbers 10 through 30, even, and numbers 47 through 50, all. And the homework will be due, due Tuesday when we come back.